This episode is proudly supported by Open Table. Nearly one third of diners are booking same day. So they're making those decisions on the spot. And 10% are, do- are making their bookings within just a few hours. And so it's why it's so important to have you know, booking software like Open Table, which allows your diners to discover you. And so when restaurants are on platforms like Open Table, they're much more likely to be discovered. We help diners to connect to restaurants. Ultimately, having technology, using technology, helps you to reattach to those diners. Experience the power of Open Table. For an exclusive offer, visit restaurant.opentable.com.au forward slash DITW. Fishing has given me a different perspective on life. It's opened up a lot of different doors for me. It's just, it really puts life into perspective for you. This is Fishtales, a seafood podcast. I'm John Sussman. The life of a female working in the seafood industry can vary depending on her specific job and location. However, in general, women in the seafood industry often face challenges related to gender inequality, physical labour and cultural norms. Many women work in processing and packaging facilities where they can be responsible for sorting and cleaning seafood or operating machinery. These jobs can be physically demanding and may require working long hours in cold or wet conditions. Some cultural norms may discourage women from working in the industry, particularly in countries where fishing is viewed as a traditionally male-dominated profession and the high testosterone environment that it creates. Despite these challenges, many women find fulfilment and success in the seafood industry. The role of the cook on a prawn boat is to prepare meals for the crew while they're out at sea. It's an important job, particularly for the boats working in the northern prawn fishery, where fishing trips can be months long, where crew need to have nutritious and satisfying meals to keep up their energy and morale. The cook is typically responsible for planning menus, purchasing and storing food supplies and preparing meals according to the preferences and dietary needs of the crew. On a prawn boat, the cook has to work in mostly small and cramped spaces and will need to be able to work efficiently and quickly in order to prepare meals for the crew between catching, sorting, packing and freezing prawns. For Ash Pendergast, it wasn't her first career choice, but it has become her life and literally her love. Hi, I am Ashley Prendergast. I am located in Cairns, far north Queensland. I am from Albany in Western Australia. It's the most southern point of WA. Um, I actually was roped into fishing when I went to America and I came back owing my mum a lot of money. She, um, she gave me the option, do you want to go work in the middle of the desert on the mines or do you want to go working on prawn trawlers? And I obviously opted for prawn trawlers. My dad was a tuna fisherman when he was younger, so he was absolutely stoked that his little girl wanted to go off and work on prawn trawlers. Um, I surfed a little bit when I was younger, a bit of snorkeling here and there, a lot of time just spent tanning on the beach. Austral Fisheries is an Australian-owned fishing company that operates in a number of locations across the country, including the Gulf of Carpentaria. The Austral Gulf of Carpentaria prawn fleet is one of Australian fishing industry's largest and is focused on catching and processing high-quality prawns for both domestic and export markets. The prawn fleet operates out of the port of Cairns and includes a number of vessels that range in size from smaller to larger vessels. They're equipped with the latest fishing technology to help them locate and catch prawns efficiently and sustainably. Austral Fisheries is not only a company committed to sustainable fishing practices, but it has an amazing culture of caring for its people. The importance of food whilst at sea is a priority and for Ash, getting a start with Austral was life-changing. I actually had a couple of girlfriends who were already working for Austral Fisheries at the time and one of them had just gotten a new boyfriend and she actually wanted to get off the boat so she gave me her job but instead of her job I actually got a job on a different boat and um, from there I just kind of did a bit of boat hopping every season. Um, My boat would change, my skipper would change and I kind of grew within the company and yeah, I ended up on the Austral Hunter, which was a pretty big achievement for me, I think. 
that, <laughs> that first trip was horrifying. I was so scared. I threw up every single day. Um, I was incredibly seasick. I remember making dinner every night or every afternoon. I'd make dinner and I'd have a bucket as well that I'd be throwing up in while I, um, while I made dinner for the boys. Um, I fell asleep for the first time standing up. That was pretty hectic. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was a really interesting big trip, that first trip, but I came back. After seeing my bank account, I couldn't complain. I think it was the most money I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah, it 100% drove me forward into the career. I had people questioning what on earth I was doing back for bananas after they'd all heard how sick I was. Um, but it was definitely the bank account. Being a ship's cook requires a willingness to adapt and be flexible, as working on a ship can be unpredictable and requires improvisation at times. Being resourceful, creative and adaptable in the kitchen can go a long way in making sure the crew is well fed and happy while at sea. Adapting to be a ship's cook without prior cooking experience is a challenging task, but it's possible with the right mindset, training and support. So I couldn't cook when I first started fishing. My first crew ended up with parmigianas and toasted sandwiches for four months, basically. Um, but one word of advice my skipper gave me was always make sure your boys have got three sources of food on their plate. You want a carb, a meat and a vegetable. So that kind of stuck with me throughout my whole life, really. And um, I've always made sure that the food I'm feeding my boys is ultimately the most substantial meal that they could have. You know, if they're happy when they come in and they can have a nice meal, then you've succeeded. In bananas, you feed eight, sometimes nine, and in tigers, you feed five. I try to put seafood on the menu once a week, at least, if not twice. So it'll be prawns or it'll be mackerel that the boys have trawled up behind the boat or could be squid that we've caught. Preparing a ship's galley for a four-month sea journey involves stocking up on necessary supplies, menu planning, meal preparation, cleaning and organisation, as well as taking safety precautions. The process requires careful planning, organisation and an attention to detail to ensure the crew is well fed, healthy and safe throughout the voyage. There's no Uber Eats service in the middle of the Gulf of Carpentaria. So pre-season as a cook, um, about a month before the season begins, um, so probably two weeks ago now, I actually did all our food store orders. This is a process of me ordering my dry stores like rice and pasta and spices and herbs and things like that to my fridge stores, which is my cheeses, my milks, my breads, my pizza bases and sauces and all sorts of things, to my meat order, which is a mission because you've got to order meat for four months out at sea or two months out at sea. And for someone who's never done that before, it's quite overwhelming. Um, so we would do our order and then that kind of settles down. The office lady will hit you back and forth and back and forth. You haven't done this or you need to do this or what's going on here and then you spend from the 20th of March, you spend that week down the wharf or at your boat setting up your nets and going to and from the office, doing courses, first aid, ESS, um, meeting your crew, uh, having a bit of fun. But, yeah, it's mostly just down the wharf with your crew, setting up your boat, getting everything ready for, for your 10 weeks out at sea. So you've got your big freezer downstairs, which ultimately most of your meat is kept in or your milk or your bread. Most of your food, unless it's fruit and veg, is kept down in that freezer. So you also have another small freezer up top where once a week I'll go down into the freezer and I'll go shopping. I take my shopping bag or my shark bag, as you would probably better off call it, and I will fill it up with all my food that I need for that week, I'll figure out, you know, a chicken, a steak, a pork, a roast, a sausages, a bacon, and I'll kind of get out everything I need and I'll cart it upstairs or I'll get one of the boys to, once I've loaded it, come down and grab it and they'll cart it up the stairs for me to the top deck and I'll put it all in the freezer upstairs then. And once that's all out, I'll go back down and do some more shopping. I mean, sometimes I forget to get meat out for dinner and the boys are stuck with 
some vegan meal, which, you know, (laughs) never goes down well, but we make it work. (laughs) The life of a Gulf of Carpentaria prawn fisherman typically involves working long hours, often in difficult and dangerous conditions. Fishermen may work in crews and are often required to work around the clock. The work can be physically demanding and mentally challenging, requiring patience, perseverance and adaptability. Food is vital, not only as fuel, but as a relief to the hard work. Sometimes this means eating between trawl shots, sorting or packing, literally with no time. So during a banana season, you, if you're lucky enough to be on a really good catching boat, you don't have time to eat. So I try to do things like prep sausage rolls and pizzas and uh, little snacky foods, fruit salads or fruit bowls, so that if we're processing for, you know, 12 to 18 hours, I can run inside, chuck something in the oven, plate it up, bring it out, shove it all in everyone's mouths while they're working, have a snack and we continue. And we don't really eat during bananas until it's until it's done. You... You have to have those those snaps loaded and that freezer honeycombed and all the prawns off the deck and then you're allowed to eat and sleep. Uh, banana prawns is 24 hours. Yeah, so you can fish 24 hours for 10 weeks. Generally, it's pretty exhilarating, but you're exhausted. Life on a fishing boat involves working long hours in often challenging conditions, such as inclement weather and rough seas when catching prawns. Crew members work together in a team, performing a variety of tasks, including operating equipment, cleaning and maintaining the boat, processing and packaging the catch. Living quarters are typically cramped and basic, with crew members sleeping in bunk beds and sharing communal spaces. The work is physically demanding and mentally challenging, requiring stamina, focus and adaptability. Despite the challenges, many find the work rewarding and fulfilling often forming strong bonds with their fellow crew members and developing a deep connection to the sea. Life on the boat is amazing. It is, as hard as it is, it's so rejuvenating and replenishing and draining and challenging. It's, it's all the things that you almost want to be paid for. I do a little bit of deck work, I, um, which I absolutely love. It's like my fitness regime, really. Um, but yeah, I help with processing and boxing and, um, I try to avoid the freezer at all costs. It's the hardest job I've ever done in my life, but it's also the most rewarding. Uh, it is beautiful. It's peaceful. It can be absolutely vigorous at times. Um, the Gulf, it's been really interesting. I mean, I'm sure fishermen that have been fishing the Gulf for many, many, many more years than I have would would have noticed this more than myself. But the change in the landscapes around you, especially traveling from Cairns up to up to the point and around to the Gulf, just seeing how the landscapes changed and corroded over time. Um, like going through things like the hole in the wall, which is just the smallest little gap that a boat can go through. Um, it's just incredible to see the land through there. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. I feel really lucky as a cook, an experienced cook out there that I, you get a routine, you get a routine when you're out there and you do the things you love. So if you like laying in the sun, which I absolutely love laying in the sun, you make time to lay in the sun. You know, if you like exercising, you make time to exercise. If you like reading, you make time for reading. If you like sleeping, do you know what? You just sleep. Like when you get the chance, it's it's kind of just you make it you make it what it is. Well, my hubby actually takes his skipping rope and he loves to skip, so he goes out into the front of the boat and he skips. Um, a couple of the boys have had boxing bags or those little um, little boxing tiny boxing bags where you punch them really fast. Um, some of them take weights out. It's um. Yeah, it's, it's what you make it. It's like a family. They're a group of brothers, which I'm lucky enough to have grown up with brothers, so it's quite easy. But I imagine for a lot of girls it would be quite hard being put in a situation where you're in a man's world. It's Fishing is a man's world. You, you are a girl living in their world. So, But the crew is generally like a family. They are pretty tight and... 
really quite caring and no, it's it's pretty nice. Um, they all flock in and out as we we come and go, so they're from all sorts of places, um, from down in New South Wales to Victoria, WA. They sort of come from everywhere, which is pretty cool. And as soon as that week starts, they are all here and we're all back together. Routines are crucial when working on a prawn boat as they help to ensure that tasks are completed efficiently and safely and that the crew members are well rested and able to perform their duties efficiently. Crew members often work in shifts to ensure the boat is operating continuously and that everyone has adequate rest periods. Crew downtime also requires routines to maximise what little spare time is available. Yeah, bananas, it definitely changes a lot. It's, um, there's no routine. There's absolutely no routine in bananas. Whereas tigers, you, you wake up at a certain time, you cook dinner at a certain time, the snap gets pulled at a certain time, the shots are down for a certain amount of time. You go to bed majority at a normal time. You may steam during the day. You may sleep during the day on the anchor, um, but you've got a bit more routine in the in the tiger season. I think spirits are a lot higher in bananas because the pace is a lot faster. Working with Austral Fisheries is considered to be one of the best jobs in the Australian fishing industry. The company has received numerous certifications and awards for their environmentally responsible approach to fishing, and the company places a strong emphasis on the well-being and safety of their crew members, providing training, support and a positive working environment. The positive culture of the company is reflected by the enthusiasm and commitment by every employee. Our Austral especially is really posting some positive changes for the environment. So it's really nice to see the fishery taking a step towards helping the environment because if we don't save our oceans, we're not going to survive. It's really good to see what those guys are doing behind the scenes to market the seafood that we're catching. My, um, my girlfriend actually works for Finn Seafood and I've actually, because we sell a lot of, or some of our product to them, I've actually had her send me photos and give me phone calls and voice notes being like, oh my God, I've got your box of prawns here. You wrote on this box. So it's pretty thrilling to see where they're ending up and hearing about what people are eating on Christmas Day and seeing what sorts of meals people cook with them. I'm actually in the process of writing myself a cookbook for cooks that can't cook that I'm hoping to to give to Austral and help their cooks, you know, find their way. It's just basic stuff, how to how to reuse your leftovers or how to get your vegetables in the fridge to last longer so that you don't have to stress about it. Just little things like that that really, really help. Working as a cook on a prawn boat can be a rewarding career for a female due to the opportunity to work in a unique and challenging environment, to learn new skills and techniques and to provide essential support to the crew. The role of the cook is essential for maintaining the physical and mental well-being of the crew and for creating a positive atmosphere on the boat. It can also be an opportunity to travel and see amazing places and to form close bonds with fellow crew members. For Ash Pendergast, it's become the love of her life. I love the sunrises and the sunsets. I love the rewards that I reap from being out at sea. I love how much it's helped me grow as a person. And I love how I've learned to cook. Fishing has given me a different perspective on life. It's opened up a lot of different doors for me and it's definitely made me appreciate uh, the the littler things and how hard work can really be. Like, it's just, it really puts life into perspective for you. This is Fish Tales, a seafood podcast. A Deep in the Weeds production, I'm John Sussman. Follow us on Instagram at Fishtails Seafood Podcast or email us at fishtailspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay tuned for more tales from beneath the surface of the seafood world every Friday on your podcast app.